The topic for today's video is instruction codes. Let's begin with the internal organization of a system. What do you mean by internal organization of a system? It basically means the sequence of micro operations performed on data stored in registers. That is, we have certain sequence of operations which is performed on data and where are the data stored in the registers. So this is the internal organization of a system basically. In every system we are performing certain operations and the operations are performed on data which are stored in registers. Now we come on the fact that what is instruction codes. See instruction codes are basically the group of bits to tell the computer to perform specific operations. The group of bits that tell the computer what to do basically. There is a specified format for instruction codes that we need to follow. The format is as follows. This is the format for instruction codes. What we are having, the format is divided into two parts. One is the opcode, other is the address. Address tells the address of the operand on which the particular operation is to be performed. This address basically tells the address of the operand on which the operation which is specified by this opcode is performed. Now for example, there is a rule for this, if we have a certain size of a memory, for example, if we have 4096 words section of memory, we at least need, because 4096 is equal to 2 key power 12, therefore we need at least 12 bits to specify the address part. Now for example, if you are having an instruction format for 16 bits and we have 4096 words, therefore we need 12 bits to specify the address path out of 16, 12 bits for the address, therefore the remaining 4 bits will be for the opcode which can specify 2 key power 14 which is 16 operations. So how will this be represented will be 0 to the 12th bit will be the address and the rest will be the output. Basically for n, 2 key power n distinct operations, we need n bits for the operation code part. This is the format for instruction codes. Now on the basis of this format, the operand can be specified in two ways. It can be direct address or indirect address. We will deal with three terms, immediate operand, direct addressing and indirect addressing. Firstly, the format as given by this figure, it is not necessary that this address part will always denote the address. In some cases, in few illustrations, this address part can act as operand itself. In that case, it will be like opcode and the operand itself in the second part. In that case, this is known as the immediate operand because instead of the address the operand itself is present here this is the immediate operand part right for next two things you need to understand one thing which is effective address let's first learn what is effective address basically in this part effective address is denoted by this part. On the basis of the effective address, we'll find 
if that address is direct or indirect firstly effective address is that address where the operand is present let's see through a diagram this is memory okay now we will look at this diagram this is a memory at 22 address this is the instruction format present which okay please forget about this part this is the opcode this is the address referring to this address 457 we see the operand is present at 457 that means the effective address for this particular diagram is 457 as I told effective address is that address where the operand is present therefore operand is present at 457 therefore the effective address in this case is 457 hence now because in the instruction format 457 was present itself and the operand was also present at 457 this address is known to be effective as well as direct address let us look at another diagram to denote the concept of to study the concept of indirect addressing According to this diagram, this is the instruction format at address 35. Now again, please leave this part. This is the opcode, this is the address. But at this particular address, that is 300, if you look at this, operand is not present. There is another address that is present. Referring to that address, we get the operand. Therefore, what I want to say is, if the address present in the instruction format contains the operand itself then it is the direct addressing if that address doesn't contain the operand but another address which refers to the operand then this is the indirect address and in both the cases the effective address is also different in this case the effective address is 457 but in this case it will be 1350 because effective address is that address where the operand is present and because we know it need to differentiate between the direct and indirect addressing in the instruction format we'll do a little modification we save a single bit for denoting for finding the fact if that particular instruction is direct or indirect and this is the bit for addressing If the value for i is 0, it will say it is direct addressing as here it was and if the value for this i is 1, it is indirect as it was in this case. That was all about the instruction codes. Thank you.